Well, good morning, everyone. And uh, thank you for joining me as we think about how to communicate our faith to others. Welcome back those who joined me last time. Uh, my name's Andrew Hawkins, and I have served alongside Canon J. John, the evangelist, writer, and broadcaster for the last four years. Now again, this morning, it'd be helpful if you had your Bible. We're particularly going to look at different passages from the Bible this morning, but also have a notepad and pen for taking any notes. And maybe instead of that, use your laptop or other device to hand. Make sure your phone is on silent or switched off so you're not disturbed for these next uh, 30 minutes or so. Now at the bottom of the screen, there's a chat box. And in the chat box uh, are the main points for today. And please do go there and you'll be able to copy down some of those main points. There's also a link to our website that I shall refer to. Also, there's a Q&A box at the bottom. And I'd love for you to submit some questions today. As I go through the content, you might have something more that you want to know. Please submit questions ready for the end and I will try to answer those questions. This is the third part of our series. We're actually going to continue the series after today. So look out for the, the links that we should put on our website and uh, on social media. We'd love for you to continue uh, joining me each time. Now, I said before that much of the content is in this book, The Natural Evangelism Course, written by Canon J. John. And this book contains 40 years of his wisdom and experience. And it's available online. It's half price at the moment, £2.50. We'd love for you to use this course in your churches over a six week period in small groups. Or if you want to simply read the same content in your own time, then please do get hold of a personal book that's also available on our website. So just click that link and it will take you to our website. But let's uh, take some time out of our busy day, probably confined at home. Let's uh, pause for prayer. And pray that the Lord would speak to you afresh today. So Father, we invite you into this time together that you would work in our hearts by your Holy Spirit, stirring up, Lord, a response in Jesus' name. Amen. So last session, we looked at praying and caring. Praying being the foundation of our evangelism. And in fact, it's the foundation of our Christian life and church and everything that we do. And especially praying for people, family, friends, neighbours, colleagues. We need to be praying for people on a regular basis. And I talked about three openings. Lord, open our eyes. Lord, open a door. And Lord, open my mouth. Those three openings we should be praying for as we pray for people that we know. And then we went on to caring. And people need to see faith lived. We need to show them the love of God. As J. John says, they do not care how much we know until they know how much we care. So especially at this time of, of lockdown, of, of uh, social distancing, how can we really care for other people? That was our thinking last time. Today we're moving on to sharing. Sharing. And I'm going to spend this whole seminar on sharing today. So not only do they need to see faith lived, but they need to hear faith told, hear faith told, the power of testimony, the power of testimony. And first of all, I want to turn to Romans chapter 10. So find Romans 10 with me if you have a Bible. And I want to read some verses from Romans chapter 10. And it says there in verse uh, 14, how then can they call on the one they've not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they've not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them or telling them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Just take a look at your feet right now. You might not think your feet are beautiful, but the Bible says they are because they are bringing the good news to other people. 
And then verse 17, consequently, faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through the word of Christ. So they need to hear our faith told. We at some point do have to open our mouths and communicate our faith to others. And that's what this is all about today. Now, I want to touch on John chapter four. So turn with me to John chapter four in your Bibles. And I'm going to expand on this next week in another seminar. But I want to just briefly uh, mention a few points from this passage, John chapter four, when Jesus talks with a Samaritan woman. You probably know uh, the, the uh, story well. It's one of the longest recorded encounters in the Gospels. I love those words in verse four of John chapter four. Now, Jesus had to go through Samaria. Well, the answer is no, he didn't have to go through Samaria because the Jews would avoid Samaria and travel around. But Jesus had a gospel purpose. That's why he had to go through Samaria. And as I say, I'm going to talk more about the conversation Jesus has next week. But after um, they have interacted, the woman, uh, verse 28, leaves her water jar behind. The very reason that she came to the well, she leaves it all behind, just like the fishermen left their boats behind and their nets. And she goes off to tell the town about her encounter with Jesus. And they make their way out of the town towards Jesus. And Jesus says, open your eyes and look at the fields. Look at all the people who are coming to me. Look at them all. They are ripe for harvest. They are ready to be gathered in to the kingdom of God. And then we read verse 39 that many of the Samaritans from that town believed in Jesus because of the woman's testimony, because of the woman's encounter with Jesus. Now, she'd not been to theological college. She'd had no other training like this in evangelism, how to communicate her faith. She'd simply at that moment encountered Jesus. And all she did was go and tell the town about that precious encounter. And that's all we need to do in our evangelism. And I would say to you today, do not underestimate your testimony, your story. Do not underestimate it. It may not be dramatic. Mine's not dramatic in any way, but it's still life changing and powerful, which makes telling your story a form of evangelism that's very difficult to argue with. So let's use our story, our encounter with Jesus as we reach out to others. Now, of course, at the moment, we can't physically speak to people. It's not easy during lockdown, but we might be able to phone them up and uh, use that conversation over the phone to share your story, how you became a Christian. We're going to think about that more in a little while. In Colossians chapter four, verse five, it tells us there to make the most of every opportunity, make the most of every opportunity. Now, many of us have heard opportunity knocking at our door. But as someone once said, by the time we unhook the chain, push back the bolt, turn two locks and switched off the burglar alarm, it's gone. <laughs> it's too late. Often the knock on the door is simply ignored or goes unanswered because we're too preoccupied with our own agendas. And we really do need to slow down and see the opportunities the Lord is bringing our way. We need to slow down. And this is a problem in London where everyone's in such a rush. We just need to see the opportunities the Lord is sending our way and not miss those opportunities when they come. And then I want to refer to 1 Peter chapter 3. So turn with me to 1 Peter uh, chapter 3 and verse 15. But I want to read verse 14 beforehand because I think verse 14 is particularly relevant for this time. Verse 14 in 1 Peter 3 says, do not fear what they fear, do not be frightened. There's a timely word, isn't it, for us as Christians. Do not fear what they fear, do not be frightened. And I'm thinking there of the virus and its consequences. And then Peter goes on to say, but in your hearts set apart Christ as Lord. So we go from fear to faith 
fear to faith in your hearts set apart Christ as Lord the one who commands your life and that's what it means to be a Christian the Lord is in command and then what does it say afterwards always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have but do this with gentleness and respect always be prepared so as Christians we should always be prepared for the opportunities what does that mean well it means that we need to be on standby just like when you put your television on standby you press the red button and it's on standby and then you press the red button again and it's activated and we too need to be on standby ready to be activated by the Holy Spirit when those opportunities come not only do we need to be prepared but we need to be pure we are a sacred temple of the presence of God we need to be pure that makes us ready I've got an illustration here two cups there we are two cups both the same both clean you'd be happy to drink from either one but one of the cups I'm going to put first of all uh, a rock in that cup like there okay now would you be happy to drink from that cup if I filled it up with a rock there probably you might be okay about that if I put in some litter there's some litter less likely you'd want to drink from that cup and use that cup and what if I put my nail clippers in oh gosh no I don't think you'd really want to drink from that cup but the finale is my sock my dirty sock let's stuff that in there as well and if you tried filling that cup up with water not that there's a lot of room you certainly wouldn't want to drink from that cup now well which one of these would God use which one of these would God use the one that is clean or the one that is dirty well of course God would want to use the one that is clean so we need to be pure like this cup this vessel and God will powerfully use us because purity equals power in the hand of God now when we do interact with people it's not always with gentleness and respect we can be rude and forceful you know you can win arguments and lose hearts or you can lose arguments and win hearts and we want to win hearts we want to be gentle and respectful around people so there's three stories that interlink to help us effectively connect with people and communicate our faith to them there's their story their story and we need to listen attentively to people when we meet with them and what they're saying about themselves to understand not respond let's listen to understand not respond initially and allowing them to talk shows that we care it builds trust and it reveals their needs so we can respond appropriately so there's their story there's your story and your story is a powerful tool a powerful tool to use nobody can discount how Jesus has transformed your life and you want to make it real using words that connect with people not the long biblical words because people do not know those words today so stick to words like love joy peace hope those kind of words you might want to add a relevant verse from scripture but nothing too long so your story and then finally there's God's story you want to share what God has done through Jesus and bring that into the conversation and you want to explain how God's story has changed your story and can change their story three interlinking stories as we connect and communicate with people now Jesus asked many questions when he was here on earth he asked people many questions and we need to do the same to generate conversation at times in the neighborhood around me here we've gone out and we've used a little survey with three questions the first question what are your spiritual beliefs as we meet people what are your spiritual beliefs who do you say Jesus is obviously repeating what Jesus asked who do you say Jesus is and would you like to know more and there's an invitation to to church obviously at the moment it will be church online so use questions here's a question to ask you how would you describe in one word one word what the gospel means to you 
how would you describe in one word what the gospel means to you? Maybe it's freedom. Maybe it's love. Maybe it's peace. Whatever word comes to mind. You could use that word, incorporate that word as a core ingredient in your story as you share it. So have a think about that. And then we also want to think about three stages as you share your story. We want to share before you encounter Christ, how you encounter Christ, and since you encounter Christ. What is life like? Before, how, and since. Think of those three stages. Now, we don't want to overfeed people. You would not try to feed a leg of chicken to a baby, would you? Instead, you would take some of the meat, liquidize it, and feed it in small spoonfuls. And I think there's a danger sometimes when we try and share with people, we try and cram everything in. Well, we need to not overfeed people. And a very good exercise in, in this is to get into a pair, maybe over the phone or a Zoom meeting, get into a pair, and one of you share your story in one minute. Only one minute, which is a really tight amount of time. But of course, that might be the only time you have in conversation with someone. One minute. So you want to share in one minute before, how and since you encounter Christ. The other person listens for that one minute, listens attentively. Good body language, good eye contact, all of that, if you're, if you're using Zoom, of course. And then when that minute has finished, the person listening retells the story for the next minute. And that's the tough part. That's the tough part, retelling the story and remembering everything accurately. And then you can swap over afterwards. It's a great exercise. It gets you thinking about your story, but also listening attentively. So have a go at that in your own time. Now, we must communicate the right message. We must communicate the right message. And I use a little wristband here. There's a wristband called the Four Gospel Points, and you can get hold of this online. Just look up the Four Gospel Points. And it prompts me. It prompts me to get the message right. And so we've got a heart symbol. There we are, there's the heart symbol, if you can see that there, the love of God. I won't go into too much detail, but I talk about the love of God for every person. Then the mistake, the cross, <laughs> that we might get in our exercise book at school, um, that kind of mistake that we make going our own way. We're all lost like, like sheep who've gone astray. And that distances us from God. We thought about social distancing and how when we're lost, we're away from God, we're at a great distance. The cross, of course, brings us back to God and brings peace with God and peace within ourselves. And then the question mark, well, what are you going to do about that? So it's a good little prompt that I use. And sometimes, even during a funeral visit not long ago, people will see the wristband and ask me what the symbols mean. There you have a way in, an opportunity. Always be prepared. Now, in the book, we have four Ds that J. John uses, and it really follows the wristband, to be honest. Design, disorder, deliverance, and decision. Design, disorder, deliverance, and decision. The Billy Graham Association, they use a different set of headings. God's plan, our problem, God's remedy, our response. It's just a way of remembering the message, communicating the right message. For young people, I like to use my fingers. Let me show you. It's called There is Only One God. There is only one God, and there is only one me. And in the middle is a gap because of all the wrong things I think, all the wrong things I say, and all the wrong things I do. There is only one cross on which God set me free. We come together like that. There is only one heaven. You enter one way by believing in Jesus you can do it today. Very simple, using my fingers, a way that I've helped communicate the gospel to younger people. So there are many methods we can use, but only one message. There's no other gospel. Galatians 1 warns us that we cannot add or take away from the message that has been given us. Now, Jesus, in Acts chapter 1, told the disciples to start in Jerusalem, to start in Jerusalem, the most threatening place at that time. They needed the Holy Spirit, which they received in Acts chapter 2. And I would encourage you, at the moment we haven't got much choice really, to start in your Jerusalem. Start at home, your neighbourhood, 
reach your neighbours and then the nations, Judea, Samaria and the ends of the earth. Reach your neighbours and then the nations. Love people where you are first. And this was brought home to me in a verse, Mark chapter 5, verse 19. Remember when Jesus had healed the man with many demons, those demons were cast out into pigs and they ran down the hillside and drowned. And afterwards, Jesus tells that man, go home to your family, your Jerusalem, and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he's had mercy on you. Go home to your family, your Jerusalem. That's where we're to start first and then we go further. So today this is uh, my prayer for you. A little um, book of the Bible just before Hebrews, the book of Philemon. This is my prayer for you. Verse 6, you might like to look at this. Different translations word this verse um, in different ways but this is my translation. I pray that you may be active in sharing your faith so that you will have a full understanding of every good thing we have in Christ. I pray that you may be active in sharing your faith. That's my prayer for you. Now we're told, aren't we, to um, stay healthy. We need to be active physically. We need to be active to stay healthy. Well, that's the same in our Christian lives. When it comes to sharing our faith, we'll be more healthy as Christians if we're giving out to others what we have received. The more active we are, it says here, the more grasp we will have a fuller understanding or deeper insight of the truth that we're sharing. We will also have more gratitude of every good thing we have in Christ, or Ephesians 1 verse 3 speaks about all the spiritual blessings we have in Christ. We'll be more grateful and then we will have more growth as well in our lives as we share, as we communicate our faith to others. We become sharper and more effective. So the more active we are, the more grasp, the more gratitude and the more growth in our own lives. I once belonged to Virgin Active Health Club and they launched a campaign in 2014 to live happily, ever active, not after, but active. And I think we should have that written on our church walls. Live happily, ever active. You see, in the land of the Bible, there are two inland lakes, Lake Galilee and the Dead Sea. The former gives away all its water and so remains fresh. The latter hoards everything it receives and so becomes dead and putrid. And I wonder which one of those are you going to be like? You see, if we just share in the space of three months our faith with two other people and they then share in the next three months, they become Christians, they then share with two others in the following months, that's four. And then if they share again over the following three months with another two, that's eight, you get this multiplication effect every three months. It multiplies in that way. And in five years, there will be 1,048,576 new believers. Wow. If that continued perfectly. In fact, the entire population of London would have turned to Christ in less than six years. Isn't that amazing? So let's proclaim without shame the gospel. Let's use the word gospel as an acronym, G-O-S-P-E-L. God's only salvation plan for eternal life. Let's proclaim it without shame. It's not just good news. In fact, it's the best ever news around. And like the early church, let's broadcast it with courage and conviction because God has committed to us the message of reconciliation. I find that staggering. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And next week, we're going to look more at 2 Corinthians chapter 5 in another one of these sessions that God has committed to us the message of reconciliation. Isn't that incredible? We've been entrusted with that message. And it goes on to say in 2 Corinthians 5, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors. We are Christ's ambassadors in the world. Every morning when you wake up and your foot touches the floor as you get out of bed, say to yourself, I am an ambassador for Christ today. 
I'm going to represent Jesus to the world. That's the highest calling you have. Greater than being an ambassador of any country, we represent the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Well, Roger Carswell, the evangelist, he says that we should use and lose literature. Use literature, strategically use literature, and also lose literature strategically. So you might want to get a hold of something like this by J. John, Making the Connection. It's a little booklet that helps people connect with God and stay connected. At the moment, on our website, these are only 50 pence. You could post these in a card. Some people do at Easter or Christmas. We do have different versions for different times of the year. Use literature and lose literature. When we get back out traveling again after this lockdown, then we might want to you know, you lose some of these on the train or the bus or in a doctor's surgery, whatever it is. Let's lose and use literature. Scatter the seed and God will make it grow. And despite our weakness and failure, his word will accomplish and achieve his purpose. Isaiah 55 says that. Well, as we draw near to an end, please be thinking of questions that you might like to ask me. I can see there's one in the question box already, so I'll come to that shortly. But I'm going to turn to the back of the, the book, Natural Evangelism, and just read the ending. Sorry to spoil the ending. It's like uh, spoiling the end of a film. But this is such a great quote by Dr. Leighton Ford. Jesus was born in a borrowed manger. He preached from a borrowed boat. He entered Jerusalem on a borrowed donkey. He ate the last supper in a borrowed upper room and he was buried in a borrowed tomb. Now he asks to borrow the lives of his followers to reach the rest of the world. If we do not speak, then he is dumb and silent. The great omission. So there's the challenge. But the E word evangelism should not equal effort. As I said at the very start of part one, be yourself and fill yourself with Jesus each day. The more you are filled with Jesus, the more naturally you will overflow as you communicate your faith to other, others. It should just be effortless. And in the words of Nike, the brand Nike, just do it. Just do it. Give it a go. Well, please go to our website. And the link's there in the chat box for all the resources that I've mentioned today, the Natural Anderson course books and also Making the Connection and other resources are available there. And next week we will be continuing the series. So we will send out the links on our website and also um, on social media. So I'd love for you to join me again next week. And uh, I'm just gonna click on the question and answer box so I'm ready uh, to answer any questions. Um, and also, if you want me to do a Zoom meeting style for your church with some breakout groups, then uh, that would be um, something I can offer you as a church. So please um, get in touch via our website if you want uh, me to do that. So I'm just going to turn to the Q&A box. Yep, and uh, someone has just said, um, Andrew, you talked about the importance of listening and building trust. I suspect Jesus was a good listener. What do you think? Absolutely, Jesus. He, he was always absorbing, taking in um, those around him and what was happening. Of course, he knew people's hearts. He had a, an advantage over us. He knew people's hearts, could see through people and what they were thinking and feeling. We can't do that. But uh, let's be really good listeners. As my mum said, you've got two ears and one mouth. You should listen twice as much as you speak. So there's, a, there's another challenge today. Well, that's all the, the questions we have at the moment, and I'm going to sign off now. And thank you for joining me. As I say, do come um, next week back online with me. Uh, meantime, the Lord bless you and keep you. Farewell. <laughs>